What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nasantaski here of Ngo Fish, bringing you episode one of Recruit Review for the class of 2020 for Michigan football. Glad to be back here doing this feature. I'm hoping to pump out a bunch of these episodes this summer. Uh, so today, today, we're covering running back Blake Corum, four-star running back out of Baltimore, Maryland, 5'8", around 190, 185, 190. Uh, the school Blake Corum goes to is St. Francis in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, might sound familiar, Biff Pogey, the former UM assistant. He is the head coach of St. Francis, Maryland. Look at this beautiful specimen of a man. I'll put a picture up of, of him here. Just glorious looking man. Uh, if you don't know his son, Henry Pogey was a fullback for Michigan a couple years ago. Nationally rated program, St. Francis out of Maryland here. Uh, number four in the country last year. They played a cross-country schedule in 2019. They were actually kicked out of their league in Maryland. No one wanted to play them. So they played teams of the of the likes of Matter Day out of California, IMG Academy, uh, Miami Central out of Florida. So a lot of top-tier programs in 2019. Uh, amongst all of that travel, Blake Corum still had a uh, 3.27 GPA. So no slouch in the classroom. And I'll throw up his stats right here. Nope, over on this side. Why do I keep doing that? He had 172 carries. Uh, his total yardage was uh, over 1,400 yards. I think his rushing yards was was around 1,200 of those. Uh, 22 touchdowns. Um, so he averaged probably around six and a half, seven yards per carry uh, with those receiving yards as well. Notable is that he put up over 200 total yards against both Matter Day and IMG, who are both top 10 programs in the country. Let's move on to his rankings. So all services have him as a four star. Depending on who you ask, he's in the 180 to 190 range. Uh, 247 is the least bold on him. They have him as the 230th national recruit number 19 running back and ninth in the state of maryland where both espn and rivals have him a little higher just outside of the top 100 his testing numbers i'll throw them up over maybe on this side who knows i might get crazy uh elite 40 time at 4.44 that would put him at number four in the 2019 combine uh, against other uh, running backs going to the NFL for that year. A 4.22 shuttle, which is very good as well. Number six in the combine. His 33.8 inch vertical is not the best. Wouldn't rank him very high. Uh, but again, that's probably one of the main reasons he's strictly a running back and not a slot receiver at that size. Moving on to his recruitment. Let's look at his offers first. A lot of Big Ten offers. I'll name the notable ones, OSU, Wisconsin, Penn State. Obviously, those three programs know their way around a running back. You got Nebraska, Georgia, LSU, Ole Miss, South Carolina, uh, USC, West Virginia, Tennessee, Baylor. So lots of others I didn't mention. It's a cross-country, highly sought-after running back there. He visited West Virginia, UCF, OSU, and then uh, University of Michigan a week after that Ohio State visit committed on June 21st, a week after that official to Michigan. He did have visits planned to LSU and USC after that, but after committed, he did not uh, go through with those. Only other notable thing is he participated in bowl practice for Michigan versus Alabama since he was playing in the Under Armour All-American game uh, the day after that. So cool little experience for him who, you know, he's also uh, an early enrollee, so... Uh, he was given that opportunity. All right, let's jump to his film. A lot of the only concerns that are really out there in any scouting report is his size. Um, you know, he ran for one of the best programs in the country against a lot of other really good programs in the country. So he had over, you know, 15 carries per game there. So durability doesn't seem to be a concern, even though a lot of, uh, a lot of national recruiters out there seem to keep mentioning it. He is obviously, you know, on the shorter end at 5'8", five, 5'9", five, um, but he's got a good frame at, at, you know, 200 pounds. He's able to to add appropriate weight to uh, to handle a beating at, at that height. Uh, another concern that I personally have going into a lot of these running backs that play for these larger programs, are they creating a lot of yards themselves or are they following behind an elite offensive line? Uh, St. Francis had you know, almost their entire line going to Div Division One programs. So it was a good offensive line. But watching this film, it doesn't appear that he's, you know, gifted a touchdown on a lot of his, his runs. He's able to uh, put on a lot of moves. He has to create a lot of space for himself. So that's good to see. You know, he's not dependent on an elite offensive line. He has the skill set to create yards on his own. Uh, and he shows good moves. You know, he shows a really nice uh, juke move, a really sidestep that leaves people in the dust. 
Um, you know, don't see a whole lot of spin move, but he does have it. And um, I think my favorite attribute is uh, he has the ability to break through the hole immediately. He also consistently shows the ability to stop and then go when something opens up. So that's really dynamic. It shows that he's actually reading the offense and watching the play develop in front of him, right? So so that's all good to see. That shows that he has good vision. Um, and, you know, his hands are a plus as well. So like I mentioned before, he doesn't have the greatest vertical, um, but get him in space with the linebacker with that athleticism, the acceleration he has, uh, and that's where you want him to be. So look for teams to really deploy him a lot like that. He was deployed a lot like that at St. Francis. He was put in the slot. He was uh, used a lot in the screen game, which is smart. Um, you know, getting him against the linebacker is advantageous for sure. So I'll list his positives, minuses, and unknowns here. So like I said, excellent speed at 4.44. You know, he's close to elite there. You won't see many running backs faster than that. His acceleration is really a plus. He gets to that top speed pretty quickly and shows really good burst. Uh, I mentioned he has some moves. Uh, he falls forward quite a bit. So he's a powerful runner. You're not going to see him blown back too much. Uh, so good footwork there as well. Um, and then, like I said, his hands, lots of, you know, good, good clips here from, from his camps that he attended. Um, minuses, not a whole lot. So there are a couple, couple instances in his film where he didn't display patience towards the end of a run. He had blockers that he could utilize a li little bit better. So down the field awareness after, you know, he's getting 20 yards down the field, utilizing those wide receivers and, uh, offensive linemen who have caught up to him down the field that could be a, better, a little bit better. And then finesse down the sideline. There are a couple instances that it's kind of tied to that patience, but he, he hunted for the pylon a lot and was stepping out of bounds just short of that. So maybe just improve his footwork a little bit, body awareness. But again, I'm nitpicking here because I don't see a whole lot of minuses. Uh, the unknowns I'll list here, ball security. Obviously, film isn't going to show fumbles. I was able to find a couple game clips where he did fumble the ball. I do like how he carries the ball, so it's not the biggest concern I have, but um, obviously that's something you, you never really know based off of highlights alone. And then blocking. So they only showed one pass protection block, really. Um, it, it seems like he has a willingness to block, the attitude, the right approach to it. But again, it's all about IDing the correct, um, the correct pass rush packages and, and knowing where to be more than a willingness to block. So that is you know, the thing that separates early running backs from getting a lot of playing time to just spot duty and, and you know, picking your picking your spots appropriately there. For comparison, Harry Hillman uh, of our very own MGO Fish team here uh, gave him the Mike Hart comparison. Um, I, I think his main reasons uh, underrated because of his size, which I totally agree with. Mike Hart had a ton of toughness, as all of you know, and I see a lot of that with Blake Corum, and they're both out of the, the Northeast, so... Um, and plus vision, you know, Mike Hart was, was lauded for his vision. I recommend you check out the full write-up from Harry Hillman. I'll put a link in the description below. So definitely check that out. I disagree with it mainly because Corum is definitely more athletic than Mike Hart. Mike Hart was like a four, six, like maybe mid, mid four, six, uh, guy and get, and, uh, and Corum is definitely more athletic than that. So his ability, his burst to get to that top speed and he could be a home run threat. And I think he, he really is that Mike Hart wasn't. So I think it, it's fine in terms of his running style, but not really his, his skill set. Um, a guy I kept coming back to when I was thinking of the comparison is Miles Gaskin. So this is a running back out of Washington drafted in the seventh round of 2017 to the Dolphins. Um, he's 5'9", 205. Uh, which I think will be the size that Blake Horn will get to. Um, he was deployed as a running back, motion to slot, used a lot in the screen game, um, wildcat as well. He was used very much as an offensive weapon. Miles Gaskin only ran a 4.5840, but displayed way better long speed in his game film than that, so I'm not sure exactly what the scenario there was with his draft 40 time there. Again, very quick acceleration. He got to that speed pretty quickly. Patient runner as well. His vertical doesn't really hop out at you. Overall, I think that's kind of uh, a good baseline uh, of what you'll see with Corum and, and how I want him to be deployed. Gaskin was only a three-star recruit. He was from Washington, so probably didn't get as, get as much opportunity to be covered like Corum does. Um, 
but I think it, it's a pretty reasonable uh, comparison there. Projection, I don't see a path for Corum to get much playing time in 2020. I think a red shirt is a great idea. You got Charbonnet as number one guy, Haskins, Sal number two, Turner's in there as well. And then you got Chris Evans coming back, right? And he really fills that role as an all-purpose back uh, slot guy that you can utilize offensive weapons. So that's four guys, really, uh, that I don't see why Blake Corum needs to be in the mix there yet. Um, so red shirt lock, but then next year, you know, Evans will be gone. I think that's a great opportunity for Corm to make an immediate impact there. Give him five to seven carries a game, maybe two to three catches, spread him around a little bit, uh, feature him in the, in the screen game and get those matchups against linebackers where he can really shine. Moving on past that, you could see him as the number two guy. You know, if Charbonnet continues to be number one guy, uh, I think you could see Corum really carve out a role for himself as an all-purpose uh, weapon type guy. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. I am really, really excited for Blake Corum, excited for this 2020 class overall. So again, let me know who you want to see in the comments below in the little poll thing that I'm trying out here. Uh, give me a shout on Twitter on what you, what you think, at Steven Toski is the tag there. Appreciate all the support on my videos thus far. I'm, I'll be cheering out a lot more coming this spring and summer. Besides that, guys, like and subscribe if you're so inclined. Stay safe, wash your hands, enjoy your weekend, and as always, go blue.